You like what I did with my makeup? I'm kind of going for sad girl hours and trying to make myself look like I had a mental breakdown. I didn't. I didn't today. But don't, doesn't it look cute? Lately, I've noticed I've been playing it safe with makeup. And honestly, it's probably because it takes less time to do the safe makeup. And before people say like, no, that's like, it's like still good makeup etc etc like i i i do my best thank you first of all but like secondly i i remember days when i would put on whole clown makeup or like do my best to look like a clown for like one of my videos so like honestly it's been a while it's been a while and i thought i should go back to my roots and do something different with my makeup do something very themed um, but I don't know. I just like put on my earrings, put on my like necklace, and I was like, red today. Today's red. So today is red for rejection, for sadness, pain, which brings me to Booktober. So today's video is about Booktober, and for those of you who don't know what Booktober is, Booktober is this challenge uh series challenge thing that i'm doing where for every day for the month of october i will be reading one book per day have i been keeping up yes have i been consistent with the times no but i have been keeping up like every day i've been upload every day technically i've been uploading up until now we'll see we'll see how it goes because again like I'm running out of my book stack. I don't know what to read next and I don't know if I have time for it because it's quickly catching up to me. But I started this. I'm gonna finish it. And honestly, this is me just like day, what is it? Day 18, just telling you, just telling you this stuff randomly, I guess. I didn't even like put it in the beginning of like the first Booktober video that I did, but the reason why I started Booktober was because of the fact that like everybody else had like Inktober, um, Wamptober or something like that. And I just wanted to do something that was themed and based on books and reading books for the month of October. And so for the month of October, I will be reading books that are befitting of that month. Either they're like mystery or spooky books creepy books horror that kind of thing although like horror isn't a genre that i typically dip my toes into so there's there's my disadvantage there i decided to do something for today and today's booktober selection booktober book that i'm talking about is frost by mp kozlaus it is a middle grade book i know i know like I have been doing a lot of these mostly because they help me pile up my my little like list that way I'm I'm not I don't seem to be not having anything for Booktober but I like like it fills up the space for me but also it is such an easy read thank goodness <laughs> reading these middle grade books I would do graphic novels too if I could but um I'm doing my best to like cheat the system that I created and work my way around the little loops and honestly, it's been going well for me so far. One of the ways that I jump over these loops is by reading middle grade books like Frost, of course. But Frost isn't... it's not a bad book. It's not a bad book. I'm going to talk about it, obviously. But uh, just to give you a synopsis of what it's about, Frost is set in a dystopian world. Oh yeah, we're going back to dystopia. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And... It's set in a dystopian world where robots have turned against their human masters. Oh my gosh, so original. There lives this girl named Frost, and her father was the one who invented these robots that malfunctioned, but now he's dead. In fact, everyone else is pretty much dead. Um, there's some humans still alive, but like they're pretty much survivors at this point. It's very walking dead of them. Frost is an orphan basically she has none of her family by her side she's the only survivor amongst her family and she has her little uh modified dog <laughs> i don't know engine genetically engineered companion by her side and her robot servant i guess her robot serving droid he's the only other like he's like one of the few good ones, I guess. He's one of the few good robots that didn't turn. He's, um, as far as the book goes, he's probably, he's 
the only robot shown to have stayed loyal to the humans, as specifically his human charge, Frost. So he's kind of like her surrogate father because of the way that her father, before he passed away, he uploaded his memories onto that robot, um, her robot named Bunt. Oh yeah, there's also like zombies in here called Eaters, which is I, which is so crazy to me. I'm like, you have both a zombie apocalypse and Terminator going on? Like that's so crazy. Um, so obviously the humans are having population controlled to the max. They're not, they're not really safe anywhere. So except for, except for there's this like place that they say is like a paradise almost. It's like almost like a, a promised land type beat where it's like there's like a, a place where the force fields, I guess, the shields uh, around the place are so strong that no robot nor zombie can get through it. So uh, that's a place that Frost is trying to get to, but people say that it's like a, it's just a speculation type thing. It's not real, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, but I want to go, I want to go though. I want to go. And of course her robot caretaker man, um, Bunt is like, it's stupid. Don't do it. Don't do it. You want to stay alive, don't you? Let's try to stay alive. How about let's try to stay alive? And along the way, Frost meets a bunch of other human survivors, some good, some not. Uh, at one point, I think she had to fight in a Thunderdome type beat. The story itself is pretty simple in her wanting to find paradise, her wanting to basically meet other humans and Bunt being like, it's dangerous out there and her uh, genetically engineered pet roams being like raw, 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 and all that so it's very it's very cut and dry i suppose like you know what you're getting you know what formulas are going to be used for this book you know what types of tropes this book will entail and include so that's something that in terms of the plot in terms of the writing it's pretty predictable but I mean, I'm going to talk about what I thought about this book in terms of predictability wise and all that. So again, this book had a very simple plot, a very frequently used type of plot in young, like not young adults really, but just young media, middle, a uh, middle grade, not middle aged, middle grade media where, you know, you have like, um, in, in a world and stuff like that. And she's just trying to find other people in the paradise city and like those people well like the people that are also survivors with her she like the end of the book has her actually getting there and reaching there but like the entirety of the book you're like does it even exist but she meets other survivors alongside herself and um they betray her at some points like obviously like humans be doing that but she's like no 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 um i'm human in a way that's like all the best parts of humanity you know what i'm saying like i'm doing my best to put a little humanity in a world that has gone to bedlam the synopsis itself says her human humanity her humanness is what makes her strong in times of robots and zombies and etc so it's kind of one of those feel good type books except i'm not a feel good type person so i was just sitting there like that's wonderful that's great good um i'm so glad and happy for you the reason why i did choose this book though to talk about for booktober is because of the fact that first of all the book its name is frost the character's name is frost yes yes and the time i guess the the setting of it is very much like wintry to me so many of the elements felt like it gave off a cold atmosphere and you know like very un uninhabitable in a way un like not allowing for other life to grow alongside everyone else is just trying to survive everyone else is just trying to make it through like famine and sickness and stuff like that and that just gives me winter vibes for some reason not winter vibes in a oh my gosh i'm sledding through the snow etc etc i mean like winter vibes as in like winter is coming and the week will not last yes october is not technically winter 
but we're almost there anyways and i wanted you to feel chilly this chilly season secondly the reason why i chose this book is because of the themes within this book i me personally i liked it because of the way that it felt like a fairy tale retelling i know i know if you uh, have followed me before i know that i tend to kind of talk a lot about fairy tale retellings uh, I, that's just kind of my thing. I like to read about it. I like to read about fairy tale retellings in the YA genre. At least that's like the ty the types of books that are easiest for me to review. But Frost was similar to a fairy tale retelling without actually basing itself off of a specific fairy tale. Like, yes, I did feel kind of like Snow Queen esque about it because of the way that. Uh, in the Snow Queen, a girl trying to rescue her friend, um, and her friend has been taken captive by the Snow Queen, and she, along the way that she tries to save her friend, she realizes that her childish innocence is what makes her strong, what makes her able to go through these challenges and to be able to face the other side, etc., right? And she's like, you know, this is what makes me human this was this is what makes me a person this warm living beating heart type thing etc right and so frost is similar in that regard in the way that frost the character herself is similar to the main protagonist i guess of the snow queen but it also doesn't follow the exactness of the of the snow queen it doesn't it doesn't follow all the same story beats or anything like that it's got this additional aspect of bunt the robot being like having the memories of her father and stuff like that and so it's kind of strange because the way that you, you're trying to reconcile the fact that um these robots who have risen up against humans and they're the enemy and stuff right the the face of the enemy is speaking with the voice of your father like that's so crazy and the thing is bunt is actually like in intelligent um as a robot like there he's got ai and stuff like that so he it's like it's literally two different entities like bunt the robot and the father um and bunt the robot is just more of a alfred type character i guess like alfred from batman he's sort of that except a little more naggy i guess so maybe not alfred but bunt is just the type of like not helicopter parent but he's very cynical of everything he's like girl if you don't stop trusting these humans they're not here for your best interest logically speaking humans always turn on each other and stuff like that like if we look at statistics and stuff like that he's like don't trust these humans but frost is like but i as a human if i can't trust them who can i trust you know what i'm saying and stuff and yet like there's also the ai intelligence of her father as well who is inside of bunt every now and then he'll appear and talk to her and he's like you know like i miss you i love you but it's like it rings out like hollow and metallic kind of because the because of the fact that he's speaking through bunt and so it's so interesting to see the way that like humanity versus the inhumane, I guess, uh, inhumanity, <laughs> the humanity of humans versus the way that other non-humans try their best to mimic or imitate, not humans per se, but just life in general, having life and being vivacious and being like just full of life i guess like the way that the robot bunt tries to mimic that and the way that the zombies even the eaters they're they look like humans but they are not acting like humans at all you know like they're they they they, they, they look like humans compared to the robots they do but they're no longer human and so it's just kind of like that whole juxtaposition of the inhuman the non-humans and the humans but also the fact that the survivor humans themselves are also acting in a way that's inhumane that's not particularly appealing to anybody's sense of humanity because of the way that like circumstances force them to become this way and it's just kind of like one of those things where the world around Frost has lost its humanity, but she's the only one that's keeping it, even among the humans. And it's so 
cool to see that kind of a theme to see that kind of a message i guess like in a middle grade book i wasn't expecting this level of like deep story tale fairy tale thinking deep like story messaging and stuff like that and i think um in terms of the way things are super synthesized i guess the way that everything is kind of put in neat little boxes you can compartmentalize things on um the internet the advent of the internet is to thank or to blame for everyone being so interconnected but yet so like removed behind a screen and stuff like that even i'm speaking to you behind a screen and the way that like ai is making a rise uh, a height in its place in society i guess and, and the way that people talk about it um and discuss it like is it valid uh should it be allowed and stuff like that and like up to what point would ai start mimicking humans to the point where like we can't tell the difference etc etc like it's just so interesting talking about all that and like artificial intelligence and the rights to artificial intelligence in this age and then like reading frost which talks about that kind of like what is humanity what is human like at at its basis at its core i will say um frost doesn't really answer that question like it poses that question it's like what is that um and then it just it uh just gives you this happy good feeling uh, um ending where like she frost is like you know like it's okay like i have made it and i have my happy ending and i never let the spark die out in me and i was like that's so cool that's good also something that i just remembered and that i just find funny i guess is the fact that frost her father right he died um and before he died he placed his uh artificial intelligence his his um memories onto bunt the robot and now like the robot and her father are like connected in that way and bunt himself also learns emotions through her father and he and it's just one of those things where it's like is it his ability to emote or is it a learned thing from her father and at what point is it like valid because it's like you know even humans had to learn about emotions and stuff like that and how to properly express them so that's a whole thing and frost's mother was also turned into a zombie in the whole zombie epidemic thing so i just find it so funny how like not funny haha but maybe a little bit funny haha because of the fact that like she lost both her parents but they like they're no longer human both of them in that way like her father has become the thing that he has invented the the very creation that destroyed humanity and then her mother has become like a an empty husk a semblance of human but not quite there and i'm just like is this metaphor or am i reading into it too much like is this metaphor or does this author just have a sick sense of humor or is it me that has a sick sense of humor? I will say though, in terms of characters, uh, in terms of all that, I will say I didn't really care much for any of the characters. I think like Bunt really fascinated me. Uh, but other than that, I actually didn't care much for the characters. Be I, I guess like because of the fact that everybody is a little bit flat to me when I was reading this book. Like it's, clear what purpose they serve to the plot it's clear what roles they're supposed to uh carry out and so like you just look at these characters with the expectations of those roles and not really as their own characters and even frost in a way i think the most interesting thing about her was the fact that um spoilers spoiler i'm about to spoil it for you oh my gosh click off if you don't like spoilers it's the fact that Frost isn't even fully human either. Like, she's a cyborg of some kind. So it's like, even that humanity that she clings on to, even that isn't fully hers. But it's also like, maybe, maybe it's best this way or something like that. It's like, maybe you don't have to be a humanoid person in order to be regarded as human. Maybe her being a cyborg is trying to say that like she is the better human now she has evolved into something different into something better into something more suited for this world 
because regular, degular, schmegular humans are no longer able to survive in such a place, except for in paradise, you know? And I'm like, is this metaphor? Once again, I'm so confused if it's like as deep as I think it is or if it's not. I promise you, it's not me trying to look at this metaphorically either. I don't like looking at metaphors. I don't like knowing why the curtain is blue. But I just kept reading about it and I was like, huh, this is trying to say something, but am I picking up on the wrong thing? 